Nothing on the Bonnell Foundation's Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast should be considered medical advice. Medical advice can only come from your CF physician. Cystic fibrosis can be a devastating diagnosis, but living with the disease can bring positivity and a new appreciation for each day. From the Bonnell Foundation in Detroit, Michigan, it's the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast, sponsored by Vertex Pharmaceutical. Here's your host, Laura Bonnell. Rebecca Farley is someone you may know from Instagram or the QVC channel, where she is a plus-size model. Rebecca and her husband, Craig, have a six-year-old daughter, Madeline, with cystic fibrosis, and son, Craig Jr., who does not have CF. CF moms connect instantly, as we did. She lives in Westchester, Pennsylvania, and Rebecca aspires to be a voiceover artist and published author. In six short years, Rebecca has already used her voice to educate, fundraise, and get involved in community service. She's currently very active in the CF community, as well as being one of the two founding members on her local hospital's Pediatric Cystic Fibrosis Parent Advisory Board. So, Rebecca, it's so great to see you uh, sort of in person, right? Right. This is the new (laughs) in-person for the COVID years. Yes, Nice to see you as well. It's wonderful to have met you on social media and then that we were able to connect. I think that's something CF moms can do, right? Absolutely. I have one relationship with a mom I have never met, and it's been for six years. But we have such a tight bond that I would call her my sister. And it's because we know the story, right? We know the struggles. We do. And we can give advice or we can just be like, that really is awful. And and instead of somebody who, I don't mean any offense to them, but if they don't get it, like, oh, well, she'll have a better day tomorrow. Maybe she won't. And I don't want to hear that right now. I just want to be able to be okay that it's not okay. And I really find that other CF moms, we we get that pain of watching our children go through whatever they're going through. It's a special, it's a unique bond. It is. And let's start at the beginning, I would guess. Um, did you know anything about cystic fibrosis before your daughter, Madeline, was born? Well, oddly enough, I don't know if I was seven or 10, but... um when I was a little girl, there was a ABC like series on the TV, and it was about Alex, the life of a child, which was the book had come into life. It was from um, Frank DeFord. And I watched the movie and mom, I don't know why you let me watch a movie about a little girl who passes away and from this awful disease. And I remember Craig T. Nelson and, um, Bonnie Bedelia. And I just remember as a kid, it really stuck with me. It broke my heart. But oh my goodness, this little girl who's my age, you know, here Craig T. Nelson is pounding on her her chest with wheels on the bus and she's crying and she's sick and she eventually passes away. And I just remember that really, that hung with me. That, that, that really hit me in a, in a hard spot as a child. Now, okay, fast forward many, many years, and it was a Wednesday, and it was a Wednesday in 2015, and Mm -hmm. it was the first day my husband went back to work, and at the time, he was in the restaurant business, so long hours, and I remember my thoughts were, how am I going to do this with two kids, a young little boy who's three and a half, and this newborn There's going to be laundry everywhere and peanut butter smeared on the walls. Like, I, how am I going to make dinner? Like, those were my worries. And not to minimize those because those are hard. Mm -hmm. But it was 6 o'clock and she was sleeping on my chest. And little Craig was playing on the floor. And it was one of those, like, perfect moments. And I was like, okay, I got this. And my phone rings. And it was the pediatrician. I was like, that's weird. You know, must just be a follow-up. or. But when I heard... The doctor's voice, not just, you know, a nurse or a regular recording. And he said, hey. And then I was like, okay, why are you calling at six o'clock at night? And he said, so 
there was a marker that showed up on Madeline's genetic screen. And of course, he played it very like, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but have you heard anything about cystic fibrosis? And if we were in a movie right now, you would see like this, and you would go back and you would see seven-year-old me sitting on the floor of my living room, crying, watching this movie about a little girl who has cystic fibrosis. So, of course, a new mom, I mean, new old moms, we have emotions and they were raw. And I didn't hear the rest of the phone call, basically, because yes, I did know about cystic fibrosis. And I went to a really scary and sad an awful place. And I can relate. And even the podcast I did just before this one with Gunnar Esaiasen, same serendipitous stories we all have. And when we say serendipity, people think, oh, it's just a love story. It's something beautiful it comes from serendipity. But it's almost like our paths were laid out, right? What you saw at seven. Now, Frank DeFord happened to be the friend of Gunner's dad, um, and he volunteered to work with the CF Foundation when he met Frank, and then years later, Gunner was born with CF. Wow. And then I worked, took a year off, worked for the United Way with cystic fibrosis, wasn't married then, met somebody for the first time who had cystic fibrosis at a lab at the University of Michigan, Dr. Francis Collins, his lab. You know, <laughs> the former head of the NIH who did the genome project for CF, that whole thing. Yeah, wow. And then fast forward a couple years later, and, you know, Molly's born with cystic fibrosis and later Emily. But I just feel like I've never run into meeting a person who didn't have some sort of pre-existing meetup with cystic fibrosis. It was like... It's laid out, even us meeting. I don't know. I just feel like it's our path. Well, first of all, I feel like I've known you forever, and I think we just met, was it the other day? <laughs> right. It hasn't been long. No. <laughs> but that's a good word to use serendipitous just because there are definitely, I don't know if it's God preparing us. I, I, I don't I don't know. And that's my 2020 phrase. I don't understand anything. I'm not going to try. I'm just going to try my best. I want you to continue your thought. But the other thing I'm thinking is, too, you have a great platform as well, right? I spent 25 years in radio and television. That's my platform. When we got the diagnosis of CF, I thought, that's why I was in radio and television. That's why. Yes. You know, I always thought radio, oh, this is great, but I always felt something was missing. And then when the girls were diagnosed, I was like, oh, now it makes sense. And you have this platform, and Gunner has this platform, and Boomer has this platform, and Jerry Cahill has this platform, and Emily Schaller at Rock CF yes. has this. I mean, so many, right? I, I believe that. And I have to say, in the beginning, I didn't think of using my platform. I just wanted to go and hit the ground running and, okay, this is what's happening. My husband, on the other hand, had a harder time accepting and understanding. And I mean, for goodness sakes, he thought the sweat test was an insurance fraud. Like, <laughs> it's just the insurance company's trying to, she's fine. You know, and then when she needed enzymes, oh, they're just trying. I was like, dude, <laughs> wake <laughs> up. <laughs> so he has since come to terms. You know, we're working through it. But well, it's hard, right? Everyone comes to terms differently. Yeah. I mean, and you you have to. And as a, as a husband and wife, you have to be willing to see the other person and their thoughts and feelings. It's not just how I feel. It's how he feels as well. And we need to meet in the middle and see where to go from there. So that has, I mean, not that I ever want to thank CF for anything, but I mean, CF has really made us who we are as a couple, as a family. Um, 
it's made me who I am as a mom. So I don't know. I don't want to thank, you know, it's. I feel the same way. And again, when I talk to other CF families, I feel that grateful for this disease sounds crazy to anyone who doesn't have it, but I appreciate everything. I am like, yeah, you want to go to Nicaragua for a mission trip? Go. We got the meds. We got the approval. Wow. Like, yeah. it's like maybe stuff I wouldn't have let them do before. I was just like, live. Exactly. Because you don't know what's down the line, especially for our girls and, you know, anyone else with CF. Right. So she is six now. Is that correct? She is. She is. So from that point of diagnosis, though, take us kind of how you told your family, you know, uh, and kind of how things grew from the diagnosis. Um, trying to think back. Boy, we told our family and, and it's interesting to see how every person, again, handles it in a different way. You have some who right there with you, letting the church know everybody's praying. And then you have others who are, she's great. She'll be fine. <laughs> and then you have others who, you know, it's just your way of life. So, and not saying either one of those is better or worse, but it definitely, they were all very different. And my husband and I have just learned to, we take it, it it's literally day by day. Because, I mean, she was just hospitalized for two weeks, just two months ago, over Thanksgiving, and it rocked our world. We had no idea that it was coming, but you just, you do what you have to do every day, and today's a good day. Yeah. And that's where we're going right now. And I think that's almost the hardest part, because you don't know that it's coming, and you're doing all the right things, and you're doing the treatments and the medications, but... It's just somehow they caught a cold that turned into pneumonia, right? Right. Right. And so how was that experience? Because you're in the, we're in the midst of COVID still, and she's in the hospital for two weeks, and then you have your other son. Hopefully mm -hmm. he could come and go. Um, it was hard. And that's the thing. It's not just my daughter's in the hospital and you're focused on your daughter, you also have your son who's 10 who understands things a little bit, you know, a little bit more. Um, he understands the severity of this disease. Um, and also he's 10. So he didn't, he missed a bunch of different activities that we had planned because it was over Thanksgiving break and, you know, before and after. So um, we had to work it out. My husband is, very, he said we would take one night off. So I would spend the night at the hospital and then the next night he would spend the night at the hospital. And he was very adamant that that's how it would be because he needed to be there for his daughter too. And I totally respected that, although it was really hard for me to relinquish control. But I did. I did. <laughs> that's um, funny because I did not. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, I couldn't. I just was, yeah. But go on. Well, Right. But then I would say, OK, I need this. This will help my son when I'm here for him because he needed that. He needed his mom. He needed his dad. He there's it's hard. I, I it is. I'm losing my words here for a minute. <laughs> no, but I get it because I guess it's wrong to say I wouldn't relinquish. It was just that um, I, you know, went from a full time job to doing it part time so I could stay in the hospital with them. And then Joe handled the home front. So he would get whoever wasn't hospitalized, because again, both my daughters have CS. So whoever wasn't hospitalized, he would make sure they got to school and whatever. And then I could go back and forth to like see a school event if I needed to go see one mm. of the kids. And then we would switch off and Joe would go to the hospital. It wasn't like he wasn't there, but you know. Right, right. So... What made it particularly harder for us is we just moved to Westchester, Pennsylvania from Lehigh Valley. And so here, my son needed to get to school 
but we were over an hour away from the hospital. So it was definitely a lot of traveling back and forth. And I know a lot of people travel to their clinics and hospitals. So in that sense, we have been spoiled just because we used to live maybe five minutes away from her clinic. And even when we moved, I said, oh, well, you know, every three months, we'll go up for a clinic appointment. We'll make it fun. And then Boom. <laughs> Two week hospital uh -huh. admission I was like, oh my goodness. But you just make it work. And, you know, a lot of people say, I don't know how you do it. I don't know either. We just, we make it work. And you would too. You know? Absolutely. Any parent would do anything they needed to for right. their child. Yeah. I believe. I do too. So, you share your story on social media. Um, I, you know, see you on Instagram and I just saw Madeline's um, clinic visit yesterday. Yes. I saw that. I love the running down the halls. <laughs> so, I mean, just beautiful. Um, and that wasn't something, you know, my girls are 24 and 27. So social media wasn't the same at that point. There I wasn't know. a lot of that sharing. But I wonder if you can tell us how it helps you and how you feel about sharing her story um, with videos and pictures. That's a good, a good question because, again, I don't have CF. My daughter has CF. So it is her story. But at some point, it's not for me to talk about anymore or in the sense of, of how I do it. And I ask her, can I post this picture? And she, she, if she says no, I'll be like, why not? You know, can I please? It helps. I want to educate people. Um, and she's like, well, I don't, I don't want to wear my neb in this one, or I don't want my vest on in that one. Okay. I respect that. We'll retake it sometimes. And she's okay with it with her neb on because I don't want her to look back and be like, why did you do that? And CF or no CF, I want to respect my children. Like I don't want to post any embarrassing photos of them on social media because that can never be undone. And that's not for me to decide. So I like to ask her permission for, you know, hey, can I talk about your clinic visit today? Um, there was one point, maybe a year or two ago, I think I put her PFT numbers. And I remember I reading a blog shortly thereafter saying, you know, that's really, that's not educating. You don't need to reveal that. And I thought about it. I was like, yeah, that's, that is a little private. And that's Madeline's private business. So I just go a little bit more generic. She had a great visit. So with that sense, I try to be very mindful and thoughtful with what I post and talk about. But my ultimate goal is to explain how this life is, to educate why, because even I didn't understand the science behind CF. I'm learning as I go, but I could carry on a decent conversation with somebody else who's well-educated about CF. Mm -hmm. And I want others to just understand how devastating this can be, but how wonderful it is right now that all of this research and advancement has become from parents like you and people as generous like they who have donated and really accelerated the path to help finding a beautiful life for these people who deserve it. And I think you empower her. I always felt that with my girls, even though it wasn't on social media per se in the beginning when they were younger, they would go and speak to kindergarten through sixth grade. Yes. And Emily was always, we still call her our drama queen, but she would go in and she would say, I'm Emily, I have cystic fibrosis, and I'm going to die. I mean, that oh was her gosh. opening line. That sounds like Madeline. <laughs> oh, I got that. Okay. Yeah. And she would show her enzymes that digested food and tell them about it. And kids were just, that was, they were so interested in that. And they could see all those pills and they couldn't believe she took all of those and she would say, like, that's only just, that's nothing right. compared to what I take. And so she did do that. And Molly, too. Molly was much more, oh, it's not a big deal. I take, you know, 25, 30 pills a day just to eat. And Molly was very, you know, they're different personalities. 
Uh, and then as they got older, but not even much older, they would be in commercials with me, public service announcements. Wow. And I really do feel K through 12th grade, it really helped them. Everyone knew they had cystic fibrosis and it helped them. They then decided to be a little quieter about it in college, but their friends knew. Right. Okay. And they welcome anyone asking them questions. So I really think they find where their comfort zone is. Yes. But being open about it has, in the most cases, helped them. I absolutely agree. And there are times where Madeline will be like, no, I, I don't want to talk about it. But most of the time she'll say, you know, because we have, we've gone into her classroom with the book, Who Am I? And we've brought in one time I brought in the vest and her preschool class tried it on. And wow, you have to use this, you know, and, yeah. and she was, she was proud about it. She was like, okay, yeah. And because what was happening is they were asking her, why are you taking pills at snack time or lunch bunch or whatever? And she's like, mommy, they keep asking me. And I tell them, cause I need it. My body needs it. I have 65 roses. And, and she's like, but they don't get it. And I said, okay, well, we can go in and talk about it if you want. And she's like, okay. And then she came back to me a few days later. I want to talk about it. And she did. And she came home. She's like, they don't ask me about why I take my pills anymore. Wow. And I was just like, that's awesome, baby. And so, so she's in kindergarten now and we're working on getting our presentation ready for, for her class. Cause you know, yesterday she said, I don't want to do it, but I know she'll come back and be like, I'm ready. So right. I want to be ready for her when she is, because it is hard as being a mom, you know, that you don't want to, you want them to find their own voice. Right. So I'm just here. I'm here when she's ready. I will encourage her, but I'm not going to push her, but I'm also not going to just let her get out of it that easily. <laughs> so Right. And I think too, with the enzymes, because um, my girls could leave their enzymes in every class because in elementary school, they have so many different classes that they're going to. Oh, right. So it just kept them involved in the classroom so they didn't have to go like to the nurse or the office so they could keep the enzymes there a non-altering drug somebody could take 10 of them it wouldn't impact anybody's health so right that was a good thing too everybody knew it became a non-issue everyone know oh molly's enzymes are in that clear little apple case you know that's right where they are and kids would remind her hey we're having snack time did you take your enzymes yes that's what we're where we need to because she's on the she's in the oh I forgot stage. No, you didn't forget. You just <laughs> you know, she's just trying to push her boundaries with herself. Right. It's not me because I say you not taking your enzymes only hurts my feelings because as your mom, I don't want you in pain, but when then you're in pain, that that's because you made that choice. So And that is giving them control of their disease though, right? right. She knows right. it's harder for us, but those are the little steps where they really empower themselves and we let them. Um, Emily hated blood draws. Oh. She would run down the hall and it was horrible. Like, um. you know, you're trying not to cry, but it's like, come on, Emily, come back. Yeah. And um, we got a really good, um, like, child network group that's in the hospital. Child Life, I think is what it's called at. Yes, Child Life. At University of Michigan. And she would like count down with Emily and hold like really pretty mm. things in front of her face. Look at this. And you're in charge. You do the countdown. So that was like, oh, Emily's like, OK, I can do a countdown. Oh, I'm yes. in charge. And so if a nurse came in, I mean, this was like at eight years old. If a nurse came in and was like in a hurry and wouldn't do the countdown, Emily would say to her, you're not doing my blood draw. Please get me someone else. Good for her. And the nurse would look at me and I was like, sorry, she's in charge. Yeah. You know, because she needed to have control. Right. Over something. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they do. And they need to be heard and respected for that. And as moms, I applaud us for recognizing that. So good job. <laughs> We're talking about this more and more as mental health awareness becomes more and more thankfully talked about. But one thing I notice about myself, you know, because the girls are older, is it is always about your kids, right? Because that's the way we are as moms. But the more I talk to moms, the more I realize we really do 
I mean, I've done therapy. I'm going to do it again. I think it's really important. But how do you handle, I mean, Madeline's six, but that's still six years of cystic fibrosis. Um, How do you handle everything that she goes through that you and your husband deal with um, mentally? Um, After she was diagnosed and uh, my husband was a little uh, in denial, (laughs) um, I suggested, okay, we need to talk to somebody together. And uh, I, we still see this marriage therapist and then I will occasionally see her on my own as well. Um, just to talk, and not occasionally, I mean, regularly, because I need that. I need that person to help me sort it out. And somebody who's not my mom, not against my mom, but as a mom, you feel for your kids. So I right. need somebody who is a little bit more, you know, once, twice removed whatever that phrase is. I always mess up phrases. Um, but to be able to work it out and have different ideas. I mean, I will be completely honest. I was going through a very dark time just over Christmas, um, just being out of the hospital. And it really hit me hard because when you're in the hospital, you can't break down. You can't I mean, I had my few moments. There was a day she had was a particularly hard day, and I I did cry at the end of her bed while she was sleeping. Um, and it was it was a Sunday in the hospital, and boy, those are depressing. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. So it is a process, and it's one of those where you need to maintain yourself when things are better, so that when things get really bad, you can kind of rely on those reserves. But you also have to be really nice to yourself and have grace. And say, if the only thing I did today was, you know, the kids are fed and relatively clean and they got to school, (laughs) then, okay, if you took a nap, it's okay. Or if if you're struggling, it's okay. Because if you say it's not okay, then it just makes it that much worse. And you cannot heal. You have to accept it before you can move on from your pain, your darkness. So, And I think that's wonderful that you said that, because I think every mom can relate to that. Right. CF or no CF. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think you've learned that early on. I I don't know if all moms learn that early on. Mm. I'm wondering, you know, moms that don't have kids with CF, maybe not even have a child with rare disease, just like school moms, do you find that you can also talk to them? Is it part of your community? Is that helpful? Or do you stick with moms mainly that have kids with CF? Um, as far as opening up about it? or Well, we since we just moved to this new area, of, you know, I, I find that I had left the, my mom friends back at home, yet now my work friends have become more of my mom friends. And they get it. They understand. And then there is one mom at Madeline's school that she really stepped up, especially when Madeline was in the hospital. And so there are the, the rare gems that really get it without, um, without not getting it. But I do find a lot that people say, I don't want to burden you because I know you have it a lot worse or, or what, you know, I'm paraphrasing. And it only bothers me because their pain is real too. And their struggles are real too. Just because we have rare disease and, you know, the neb cups are overflowing and I need to sterilize some more. And, you know, I'm feeling like a failure today. You could be feeling like a failure for different reasons. And that is just as valid as mine. And you want an intimate relationship with other moms so you can talk about things. And if someone is always like, you've got it so bad, I can't even confide in you. (laughs) I always felt that way, too, and told people, like, oh, you're having just as much pain. There's no... Absolutely. (laughs) Nobody's keeping track of who has more pain, right? Exactly, exactly. And it's like, I'm not here to minimize you. I'm here to relate and offer advice or just to listen. And that's all I want back. So 
I have been really blessed to have friends in different parts of my life who are just solid objects and, um, and it's important to have those people. And if you don't, then reach out on here. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like you're getting really good feedback on Instagram. Um, you're a model for QVC. So it seems like, you know, I'm sure there's hate stuff everywhere, but it seems like you're having good feedback on social media. Honestly, yes. I'm very blessed for for my uh for the people there and the support and the messages. Um they're all genuine and they all really do care about Madeline or about her journey. And I am really appreciative of that because that's all I'm here for. I'm here to share. And if it can reach one person to help whatever their journey is, and if it can help them feel like they're not alone or understand a little bit better, then that's my goal. Job well done, because I want to be there for people and for other moms or even our dads. Let's talk about mm-hmm. the dads a minute. You know, we're all in this struggle called life. So. Yeah, and I think the dads process it differently. I mean, I've certainly found that with my husband, where you and I might, we could talk about it all day long. Hmm. They, I don't think, like, they'd rather go to a football game or have a drink of whiskey and chit-chat about something. Oh, yeah, we happen to be CF dads, but it's not the focus, right? Right. I I was talking, when Madeline was in the hospital, um, I was talking to one of my close CF mom friends, and she's like, yeah. Uh, she's like, both of my girls could be in the hospital. Somebody will, will ask my husband, hey, how are the girls? I'm like, oh, yeah, they're good. They're good. <laughs> she's like, they're, that is they're ch- good. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly the truth, right? Yes, yes. So, and that's where I say, you got to love them because you know what? Then the next thing you know, he's out buying a plushie and, you know, making her her favorite dinner just because she's not feeling well or something. You know, he is dad on the the spot to take care of her because they love their kids. Absolutely. It hurts them too because dads are fixers. They want to fix it. They want to, all right, you're not feeling well? All right, fix it. Moms are fixers too, but we're a little bit more, okay, what do we need to do? You know? Right. So. Yep. How can we do it? So thank you for doing this podcast. Of course. I want to talk about involvement and what kind of things you're involved in, because one of them is you're helping the Bonnell Foundation. Um, You're doing this podcast. You, you know, appreciate our social media. So every little bit you're doing is huge. And you are very involved in the community. How does that involvement, I, I call my foundation, my foundation is therapy to me. I get to meet moms like you. I get to meet dads. I get to meet families and people with CF. And I feel it all heals me in some way. And it's so needed. And I just wonder, how does all the volunteer work you do and coming on a podcast like this, just everything you do, how does that help you? It gives me a purpose. Um, It's another way of helping my family and and Madeline, of course, but it also helps the rest of us because if I can make her life a little bit brighter, healthier, happier, longer, then that helps us too. And it helps ease our worries. So, you know, if, if I can be up there in front of the crowds at the walks, you know, getting them revved up or cheering them on, then I feel like there's a purpose because every little bit helps. Right. And you're motivating people and you're raising awareness. I mean, it's so beautiful. I I just, that's, it's just the way I think and I feel. And I just want to put it out there to others. Because again, I, I don't want to keep saying CF or not, but we're all here for a purpose. And if this is mine, then okay. I'll do it. Whatever you need me to do. Absolutely. Well, what are your hopes? I mean, obviously, our hopes for the future is a cure for CF. But 
what's your outlook for Madeline's future and what are your hopes and dreams? Uh, for Madeline, you know, of course I want the quintessential. I want to see her happy and, and with a family of her own. Um, I want to see her thriving and not getting poked and prodded and blood draws and ports and picks and because CF takes up a lot of time in the regular day. Mm -hmm. So I want her to have more time to just right now to be a kid when she's older to be a preteen and so on. I, I want her to have the life that it seems that other people have, but again, maybe that's not attainable. Um, I want her to have uh, stability, happiness. And then for me, I, I want to be able to not worry so much, <laughs> but that's a mom thing. Um, right. I would love to not spend so much time on CF as well, but I'll do anything I can. But I would love to, to kind of relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. As simple as that is, that's not very easy to do. Right. Because it's always in your mind. Always. It's always it's like an elephant in the room. The elephant's there and he's doing whatever he's doing. You can hear him. You could see him. He's there. <laughs> you can't get away from it. So do any words of wisdom from Madeline come to mind? Were there any cute little kid things where she gets it or you think, wow, you know, you're really processing this? in a great way um it's funny actually I've, i have two of those in my mind from my son only because when she was first uh when she was one and had gotten her vest i remember i had read an article about cf and the effects on siblings who don't have cf and i was like oh my goodness i haven't checked in with him how does he feel and at the time she had started her vest well and she still does pretty much screams the entire 20 minutes she has always hated it. Um, I don't want to do shaky. She's always been a fight. And then I'd cry and the TV had to be loud because all the machines were loud. And so one day I was driving in the car with my son. His, he was still, you know, three and a half, four. Oh, no, I'm sorry, four and a half, five. And, you know, I said, hey, buddy, how do you feel when Madeline has to do her shaky? And... He said, oh, I feel good, mommy. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do you feel good? So I was like, oh, okay. Why do you feel good? <laughs> and because I was like, because mommy's crying and she's crying. He's like, I know, but it's good for her. And it was that exact moment and phrase. And we still say it. It's good for you. I'm sorry you don't like it. I don't like it either but it's good for you. And that phrase has carried us to this day. That is beautiful. What wisdom from him, right? I know. Yeah. They're both, I mean, like I said, she's a little bit, she's more like your Emily with the dramatics and I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I have CF. It's like, okay, hold on, hold on. So. Right. Is there anything else that you want to add in this podcast, maybe that we didn't address, either things you're doing or thoughts for the future? Um, thoughts for the future. I'm excited. Uh, I'm hopeful, I should say. I'm hopeful and I am ready. I feel like COVID kind of put a pause on some things. You know, I, I had some great fundraisers going and then the whole pandemic has happened and I'm excited to somehow figure out a way to get those back up and running, to work on educating more and spreading the word to many different people because CF needs a voice. And I think we're getting that just by doing this and using our platforms and our voices. And we will put uh, how people can follow you in our show notes. But on Instagram, it's Rebecca Plus Model. Is that correct? Yes. I think there's a, is it an underscore. underscore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we will definitely put that in show notes. But thanks for sharing your story. 
not only on this podcast, but on Instagram and social media. It is wonderful to follow you and see the joy despite of CF. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The original music in this podcast is performed by Kevin Allen. It's not complicated. Who happens to have cystic fibrosis. We all got our worries and fears. I know what got you frustrated. But loving you is so all right. This has been the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. For more information and to learn more about the Bonnell Foundation, check them out online at thebonnellfoundation.org. That's B-O-N-N-E-L-L foundation.org. This podcast was sponsored by Vertex Pharmaceutical, the science of possibility, and produced by Jagged Detroit Podcasts, 